What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Marco and on today's show we are taking a look at the one game that by far has been on my table more than any other since I went on my hi hiatus a couple months ago and that is Play Games is Let's Play Tennis. So uh, I always have to give a little story about uh, about my favorite games here and this one is no exception. So um, over the past year or so, uh, I had to find something to get healthy, right? Um, and I gravitated towards tennis, which is kind of weird because I didn't grow up playing tennis. The most experience that I had with a tennis racket was going to my no-no's house when he lived in Florida, and they had a tennis court back there, and I could not get the ball in bounds. I could not hit a drop shot. I could not even serve the ball. I couldn't do anything with a tennis ball, other than pretending I was Sammy Sosa and hitting a home run over the fence, which always upset everyone because that is not tennis. Um, lo and behold, many years later, I get married and my lovely wife has been playing tennis her entire life. And we decide that we're going to join a tennis club together as a way to sort of, you know, get fit and, and learn a new sport, at least for me. And I got to tell you, I absolutely fell in love with the sport of tennis. I watch tennis all the time now. I play three to four times a week. She plays like seven or eight times a week, which is ridiculous, but God bless her. Um, and I really fell in love with tennis. So what do I do when I fall in love with a game? Well, I have to find the tabletop version. I did not know this until much later that Play Games dropped Let's Play Tennis as a PDF last holiday season. I didn't buy it back then because I didn't know of Play Games back then. I know this is only a year ago, but that's the God's honest truth. So I missed out on the sale. So I anxiously awaited for the box version to drop, which finally came in September of this year. And I have to say, once again, Play Games knocked it out of the park with Let's Play Tennis. So without further ado, let's head down to the new game room, which is right here, and let's check out Let's Play Tennis. All right, everybody, we are all set up and ready to go. So I'll draw your attention down to the table here. And the first thing I got to say is, wow, <laughs> um, this is pretty impressive. It's a tennis court. But not only that, I mean, you've got your games up here, your points down here, your tie break up here. There's enough room to play doubles, one on the left, one on the right, or we would say the ad side or the uh, uh, deuce side. Um, I guess that would be left and right, right? Right? I don't know. Maybe I don't know as much tennis as I think I do. <laughs> um, but uh, first first impressions when Play dropped this game was, holy cow, that is freaking beautiful. And by the way, I'm not even doing it justice because there is a second side, and I do have two courts here. does not come with two courts. I managed to get two courts, long story. Um, this is the back side, okay? And this will come into play. Uh, when you're playing tournaments. So we'll get to that a little bit later in the demonstration. So uh, this is your tennis court. And before I get into all the cool stuff that you could do in the game, because there's a bunch of different modules and a bunch of different ways to play this game, all of which are so much fun and so unique. Um, but also there are plenty of sets right out of the gate that you can have. So for example, you have uh, what I've been playing with, and yes, I keep everything in plastic bags uh, to sort of preserve them. I never use rubber bands. Pro tip, never, never use rubber bands when you're uh, trying to save your game parts. Uh, so this would be the 2022 men's pro set. So I have them all sort of uh, sorted into tournament right now. So they're kind of all over the place. Like Here's Nick Curios, Alex Zevrev, who's been killing my league right now. Uh, Kokonakis, who is Kyrgios' uh, doubles partner, Matteo Berrettino, Berrettini, Carlos Alcaraz, currently the world number one, both on the tabletop and in real life, I might add. Uh, Medvedev, uh, Djokovic, um, Nadal is in here somewhere. So that is a that is the 2022 uh, men's pro set, which we are not going to play with them tonight. I'm just showing those off. Uh, you also have Tag, which is, uh, I, what is it, the Tennis America group, or uh, I forget what exactly what it stands for. Keith is going to kill me for not remembering the name of it, but this is the fictional set, and uh, I played a little bit with the fictional set, and it plays extremely similar in terms of the playing styles of particular players 
two real life counterparts. Now, obviously, if you really, really know the game of tennis, you could sort of pick out who's who. Um, but it sort of allows you to make your own tennis universe, which is something I really appreciate from play games. They have a version of that in all their games, um, and tennis is no different. So uh, one thing that has been really interesting to see about the tag set is going on the play community on Facebook and just seeing all the different results people are getting with the same group of players. So that just goes to show you how these dice can really influence the game. Uh, we also have the women's version of that. As you can see, I've not opened it yet, but I have something a little uh, different I want to do with the women's set, which I'm not going to get into tonight. Uh, but I have not had a chance to open them, but I have been following along. I just threw the dice by accident. I've been following along on uh, online there of uh, you know players who are... Uh, doing women's uh, tennis and sort of the same result. It, it depends on what's happening on your tabletop. People are getting a lot of different results, so that's really cool to see. And then you have, um, I may have, oh, see, this is still, there you go. So this is the second part of the, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. This is the 2000s Pro Stars. See, you always got to read here. So this is the 2000s Pro Stars. So these are, uh, let's take a look. I actually haven't looked at these yet. We are, again, not playing with these tonight. Sort of burying the lead here. So, yeah, here's Nadal. Prime Nadal. James Blake. David Goffin. Kanas. Uh, Konechov. Shapovalov. Federer. Uh, Prime Djokovic. Andy Murray. Andre Agassi. Andy Roddick. Oh, uh, man. So, Jimmy Novak or Yuri Novak. Taylor Fritz. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so you get the gist of it. Um, all of these sets available on play.com. I'll put the links down below. So, um, but that's not even the coolest part, in my opinion. The coolest part is we have an all-time great set, which is what we are going to be playing with tonight. Now, these are all-time greats, male and female. Females in the red, male is in the uh, green. We're gonna play with the males tonight. And let me just get them all out here, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you a couple of things. So, uh, first things first, I want to just show off the basics of how this game works. Just the basics of how the games work. So let's grab uh, two uh, females made their way in there. Let's. These are in alphabetical order. So let's get uh, let's get a classic match here. So let's get Federer, greatest of all time. Set Federer. And there you go. Let's do Johnny Mack. John McEnroe versus Roger Federer in a bit of a dream match. So both of these guys are going to be in their prime. Uh, and let's just play. Um, let's just play a quick. Let's play the best out of uh, first to one. Let's just say just real quick to show you the mechanics of the game, and then we could really get into some of the different modules. So this. As I mentioned, you could play a few different modules of Let's Play Tennis. There's the point-by-point. Point. Uh, there's the fast-forward module, which you could basically play set-by-set, set, um, or game-by-game, game, rather, or you could play set-by-set uh, set in the No Rally module. So it's up to you. You can get a full four-hour experience on your tabletop. You could play Roger Federer versus Johnny Mack in a true-to-life four-hour Six sets all the way, uh, or well, six sets would be ridiculous. Five sets, um, and six points will win the set. That's what I meant to say. Uh, and it will be a four-hour match. I have done that before. I usually get the matches done in about an hour and a half to two hours. It's not quite four hours. I'm, of course, exaggerating a bit there. But point is, um, as I'm checking my camera rig, it's a new setup, everybody. Um... The point is, you could do it that way, or you can do what I like to do, which I will demonstrate later on. You can roll to see, basically we can get it to a game point, so it'll be advantage Federer and 40 for uh, McEnroe, or let's just say we get it to deuce, right, and then you would play the game out and see, oh, McEnroe won the point, he has the advantage, McEnroe wins, McEnroe has won the set, he will go out, or won the uh, won the game, so he will go up one game to nothing. You could play that way. Or you could play the super, as I mentioned, the no rally super fast, where it just goes boop, 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 and you figure out 
who wins that way. So let me just show you point by point. Here's another cool thing I have to mention about Let's Play Tennis. It comes with your standard issue die, two D6s and a decider die. You could play shot by shot that way. Or you could spend a couple extra dollars and you can get Al Wilson's beautiful, uh, well, you can get the free download PDF, but I'm a bit spoiled and I had I don't like cutting cards on my own if I can help it. So I splurged a little bit and paid for the just released uh Facts, fast action cards. You could play this way too. Uh, for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to do this round with just the dice to show you how it will work and basically just show you how the game goes. So, uh, Federer, let's just say he is on the ad side, so he'll be serving. So, if we're doing point by point module, you get a performance chip for serving. Now, you could use these performance chips in a number of different ways, which I'll get into. And some of you guys in the comments will have to refresh my memory because I've been playing sort of modified rules a little bit, some made-up rules, if you will. For example, you could spend a performance chip to increase or decrease your opponent's, uh, increase your return rating or decrease your opponent's return rating. I don't play that way, um, just personal preference, but that's how it's supposed to be played, so that's how we're going to play it tonight. So what you would do is you take a look at Roger Federer's card, and just to sort of familiarize with the card, it's like any other play game. An ace will be if you roll a nine, you'll double fault if you roll a two, uh, and these returns and winners we'll get to when we go to McEnroe's card. And here's the quality. Sometimes you'll get asked some qualities, specifically when you're doing uh, the no rally module or the fast forward module. But when you're doing point by point, these sometimes come into play, but I'll explain that in just a second. And like any other play game, underline means it's doubled. So he's good on the forehand, backhand, volley, footwork, endurance, savvy. He's got basically a perfect card. However, we're playing tennis, right? Well, there's three surfaces in the sport of tennis. You've got your clay surface, your grass surface, and your hard surface. Well, uh, certain players are going to perform better on cer certain surfaces. For example, if we had Rafael Nadal's card, he is almost unbeatable on clay. I think he's got 14 French Open championships, which is played on clay. Might even have more than that. That is unheard of. So for that, you have to look at these symbols here. So a star means this. he has this quality on every surface. This little grass means he's good on grass, and this little square means he is good on hard surfaces for that quality only. So, for example, if you look at Johnny McEnroe, just on the forehand, well, Federer is going to get him on the forehand on any surface, whereas McEnroe is only going to get him on the hard surface. Uh, whereas, vice versa, McEnroe is going to get him on the backhand on any surface, but Roger Federer can only use the backhand on grass surfaces. Pretty self-explanatory. So, uh, without further ado, again, just for right now, I'm going to use the die, uh, but we will be using these in a little bit. So, let's play out a, a point here, and, and see a game, rather, and see what would happen. So, Federer is serving, so he gets performance chip. So, if he rolls a 9, he gets an ace, and look at that, he rolls a 9 right off the bat. Boom! So, he will get an ace. And he is still serving this first game. He's going to serve this whole game. Uh, we roll again. An 8. All right, so this is my little ball. So the ball is hit over to McEnroe. So now, in order to return that, he needs to roll between a 6 and a 10. Anything outside that range, and he will miss the shot. Now, Federer can spend his chip here to decrease that from a 6 to a 9. But it's early in the game. I don't think he wants to use a performance chip yet, so we'll just roll it. He rolls an 8. That is within the range, and it's doubles. So when you roll doubles, that is considered to be a good shot. Think of like a drop shot or a really incredible return shot that McEnroe was able to fire off. It's going to be really hard for Federer to return it. So whenever you roll doubles, Anything will decrease, so that means if he decides to do just a regular return shot, it is no longer 5 to 9, it is now 5 to 8, and if he tries to go for the winner, which I will have him do just to demonstrate it, it will now be 2 to 7 instead of 2 to 8. So we, ha we have a performance chip, he's going to spend it, 
And this means Roger Federer is going to attempt a winner. What that means is if he rolls between a 2 and an 8, if it wasn't doubles, so 2 and a 7 now, he will automatically win this point. Let's see. And he rolled a 9. He doesn't get it. So that is an automatic win for McEnroe. And we are tied at 15 all. So Federer will serve again. Rolled a 2. That's a double fault. That is a double fault. So McEnroe goes up 30-15. Federer again. He hits the 9 again. Another ace. That's two aces for Roger Federer. So they're tied at 30. Roll the 10. So that's a good serve. McEnroe needs a 6-10 to 10 on the return. He'll get it. Federer needs a two to uh, five to nine. He will get it, and he rolls a seven. Every time a seven is rolled, you have to look if this is the uh, how I how I look at it in my head. The player on the left is black. The player on the right is white. So in this case, it is we have to look at the black die, which is a six. We head down to the six quality to see if he has it. He does, and it is savvy. And not only is it savvy, it is underlined. So what that means is Roger Federer has earned himself two performance chips because he gets one for having savvy and another for having an underline. And uh, it is on any court, which, by the way, I don't think I mentioned in my head. We are playing on a hard court for this match just for just for tonight, uh, just for right now. Uh, so he has earned he rolled a seven. Uh, and he has earned his two chips. The ball goes back to McEnroe. He needs a 6 through 10. He will get it, and now Federer is going to try that winner again to make it uh, 2 through 8, and he will win the point. And he doesn't get it again! So McEnroe gets the point again, and now he is one point away from winning this match. Um, of course, we're only playing one game. This would go on for however many uh, games you want to play in, however many sets, yada, yada, yada. But remember, we're only doing one for demonstration purposes. So now McEnroe, he has match point. Federer is still serving. So let's see if he can get that ace. He will not. But now a 6 through 10 will be the return. He's just going to let McEnroe return this because I think he wants a winner here. And McEnroe's not going to return it, so we got a deuce. He, uh, he uh, is unable to return Federer, so we are now tied at 40, or in tennis, a deuce. So Federer serving with a deuce in hand, rolls the 7 again. Two more performance chips back to Federer. Uh, one quick note, you can never have more than four performance chips at a time. When I first started playing this game... I completely missed that rule. So I was giving certain players like 15 performance chips. I was like pulling out pawns from out of nowhere to give it to certain players. And I'm like, wait a second. These matches are all ending in straight sets. I mean, what is going on here? I have to be playing this wrong. And I was. Uh, so you can never have more than four. So Federer hits the seven. That's a big return. McEnroe now. Needs a 6 through 10. He will get it. And now Federer is going to try the winner once again. That time he gets it. And it's advantage Federer. So it is now match point for Federer. Rolls a 4. And it's a double. So it'll be a 6 to 9. And you know what? Let's just do it. He needs to roll a 6 to 9. A 6 to 8. He needs to roll a 6 or a 7. To return it, and he... Whoa, wait a second. I was waiting for this to come up. Anytime you roll a 12, you need to get the unusual chart out. So you come down to unusual. Was it a serve? No, it's a return. So we roll again on the return. It's an 8. Successful return, but line judge rules violation occurred. Point for opponent. That's a win <laughs> for Roger Federer. Oh, Oh man, I don't I don't know if I like the match to end like that. So let's let's give the point back to Federer and uh, let's play this. Let's let's win this without judges interference. How about that? So another seven for Federer. We check the quality. That's two more performance chips. Oh, excuse me for Federer. McEnroe a six to ten on the return. He's not going to get it. That's how he does it. Federer wins it the good old fashioned way. So that is. 
let's play tennis in the point by point module. So uh, actually, let me, while we're here, let me show you the other modules so you could see how this works. And then we're going to set up a tournament and I'm going to show you how that works too. Uh, okay, so let's do, let's do the no rally module. So this one is pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and see how many qualities we're going to basically, it's a counting of qualities. All right. So I'm going to leave this here so the camera upstairs can see it. Let me check that camera to make sure it's still good. It is. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll the die and we're going to do what I like to call the play way. So you read it smallest to largest. So that's a one, two. You find one, two on the quality. So we're looking for forehand and backhand. So then what we're going to do is we're going to study the player cards and count up how many forehands and backhands they had. Now remember, we're playing on hard. So in this game, Federer, he's got two forehands, but the backhand only works on grass. So he's got two. McEnroe has two on the forehand, and he gets another one on the backhand because he's got that star, so it works on any quality. So he's got three. So McEnroe is up one. So what do we do when someone is up one? Well, the underdog, let's say McEnroe is the underdog. I probably should have mentioned that beforehand. You need a favorite and you need an underdog. I think Johnny Mac's an underdog. We'll call him the underdog here. So the underdog is leading the set. Okay, he's leading the set. And we're going to see what he's leading the set by. It's a six. So he is leading the set. Oh, wait, did I do this wrong? I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did this wrong. Uh, a one five. We have to see what type of advantage. So he's leading by one. We'll look down here. If they were even, it'd be deuce. If it was a small advantage, which this is, he leads 40-30. If it's a moderate advantage, means he leads by two. It's 40-15. And at anything more than a two quality lead, it's 40 love. So it is a small advantage for Johnny Mac. And we rolled a 1-5, which is a six. Advantage player leads 5-4. So... He is the underdog, and he is leading 5-4. So we come over to the no rally here. I apologize. I have not played the no rally in a while, so I had to <laughs> live on the spot had to remember that rule. A uh, 9. So he wins the first set 7-5. So how you would do that is um, you would probably have a piece of paper out here, but let's just say he's leading one set to nothing. We'll use this as our set counter. Uh, but what you would do is you'd have your piece of paper out here and it would you'd write down that McEnroe won the first set 7 to 5. Um, okay, then we do it again. Oh, where'd that one go? Back here. Okay, it doesn't really, we don't need the decider die anyway. 2-2. Two, two. Backhand surface. Alright, well he can't use the backhand again. And surface is down here. Well he's got two hard. So two for Federer. He could use the backhand again. Use So it's even. We got a deuce. So we come down to even, which is a deuce. Roll the three. The lower seed leads five to one. Look at this. Johnny Mac is up five to one. Roll the five. He won it six four. So if we were playing a, th a uh, best of three, Johnny McEnroe would win and you would play it out. So uh, let's say that's it. That's the end of three. That is the no rally module. And then finally, you have the for the set module, uh, or the fast forward, I like to call it. So this is the one that I play the most because you could pretty much get a full five set match that goes the distance, even with tiebreakers. You could get a full match done in about 30 minutes tops. Uh, and I'm talking like back and forth, five set thriller, you can get done in about 35, 30, 35 minutes. So very similar process. What you're going to do, roll the die. It's a one and a three. Forehand volley. Federer on the forehand. He's got two. Volley, he's got nothing because we're on grass. So give him two. Forehand, he's got two. Volley, he's got two. So McEnroe is up four to two. So that is a moderate advantage for Johnny McEnroe. So he is up 40 to 15. So what I would do is 40, 15. Let's say Fed is serving, give him his chip. And now this is where I'm going to put these away and I'm going to tell you about these guys over here because these will take your game time down even further. 
Uh, and these are your fast action cards, and all these are are rolling the dice. That's all it is. That is all it is. It does all the work for you, so you don't have to keep, you know, that's how lazy we're gotten, you know. <laughs> okay, this, this, this motion got too hard. I get it. I get a little tennis elbow, pun intended, rolling the dice over and over, especially a game like this where there is a lot of dice rolling. Uh, I, I have switched to this, and I find it to be a lot better. So um, they're double-sided, and they're reversible. So uh, all you got to really do is shuffle them really good and make sure you're flipping and turning and, and getting some variety in there. Uh, all right, so 40 to 30 advantage for McEnroe. This is uh, game point already, but serving is Federer, an 8 so 6 to 10, that's a 7, so uh, we look, remember, he's 2, does he have backhand? Yes, he does, so he's got a performance chip. Federer's going to spend to try and get him, uh, get the winner, so he needs a 2 through 8, he's got it. So Federer grabs his point there, it's 40 to 30. Uh, McEnroe in the lead, I like to clear these away, kind of keep the court clean, if you will, and also, you know, if you go back and forth, especially with the fax version, I don't usually move the ball back and forth, although for doubles matches, it is super helpful, uh, and by the way, how you would do doubles matches is just like this, um, so he is serving, and then you alternate, so boom, 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 right? Or back here, I suppose, here. So you would just alternate who would return the ball. Um, some people love doubles. Um, I think it's fine. I actually have a cool thing planned I, that, again, I'll talk about on a different video uh, that I kind of want to do like a doubles league with the fictional players. So uh, anyway, so it's 40 to 30. Federer, uh, he rolled the two, so it's... Well executed. Oh, no, that's a double fault. Never mind. That's the win. That's the win for Johnny Mack. I forgot he was a two on the double fault, so Johnny Mack would win the first game. Um, and then, if you're, like I said, if you're playing a full set, you'd come back, you'd find whatever the new qualities are, and you would go ahead and, um, and you would uh, play it out. So that is Let's Play Tennis, and now what I want to do is I want to pause and uh, reset the cameras, and we're going to do a tournament setup. All right, everybody, we are now set up and ready to do our tournament. So as we head down to the table here, all I did was take that tennis court and flip it over, and that's how we get the tournament field. And as you'll see here, there's eight boxes. Now, uh, I want to show you this really fast. So this is actually the first time that I'm doing a tournament with the all-time great players, and I realized that there are exactly 32 players here. So basically, we're skipping some of the early rounds of the tournament because the reason being, let me grab a stack here to show you, uh, this is one half of the 2000s Pro Star set. One half, okay? That's about half of the half. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, there's almost 200 players in any given set except the all-time great set. So... The tournament module is going to be a little bit longer with the larger field for obvious reasons. Uh, so I'm essentially going to have to skip some of the early rounds of the tournament in order to make this work. But uh, again, the tournament module is there because uh, when the game was originally launched, they build this as your own tennis sandbox. And I think that still holds true now. I really do. I think... The idea behind this game is you could really do, and by the way, all I'm doing is shuffling the cards here. Uh, you could really do what you want. You could play every single match of every single round of every single tournament. If that's your prerogative, go for it. You can pick your own top eight and make your own bracket or top 16 or top 32 or top 64 and do your own bracket from there. And you could do it point by point. You could do it no module or you could do it no rally. It's up to you. Um, I like to stay faithful to how the game was designed. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'll turn your attention back down here. Um, I'm going to pretend that we have sorted through a very large tournament and we are down to our final 32. So what you would do is you would have, 
uh, four stacks of eight here. So let's just do two to each here to, uh, I might've messed that up. I'm just trying to keep it as random as possible. So you would have done this already. One, two, three, look at that. I didn't screw it up. Uh, you would have done this already by, um, basically parsing down and parsing down and parsing down while doing quality checks. So what we have here is we have four groups of eight, and now we are just going to try and find out uh, four, yeah, four groups of eight, and we are going to try and find out who the top eight are to make the tournament. So how do we do that? Well, we roll our die, we come over to the tournament. Now this is what I was talking about. We would have done the early rounds to get here. We have now basically simulated to the quarterfinals. So we are going to roll the die, read it play style one four. Top player and top player move on. Wow, tough crowd. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab the stack. No surprise, no intrigue. Flip it over and just find the two top players. So that's going to be uh, right off the bat. That's Johnny McEnroe has made the final eight. Uh, and we've got a 2A. That's Rod Laver has made the final eight. No one else. Yeah, Boris Becker's a 2B. Andy Murray's a 2C. All these other guys are threes. Um, now, by the way, the game also tells you this. You could be faithful to the tournament ratings, or if you get deep into your own season, you could have your own ratings, and that could be the tiebreakers. Or you could just say, you know what, I don't know who this Rod Laver guy is. I'm going to take Andy Murray. It's totally up to you, but I'm going to stay faithful to how the game is designed, and I'm taking Johnny McEnroe. And Rod Laver, congratulations, you guys have made the final eight. So then you would repeat this for the remaining three stacks. So let's see. Let's get some variety here. Four, five. Surface and top player. Okay, I, I uh, since we've been playing on hard all night, let's say we're on grass now. So let, we're, we're on a grass uh, surface. So we are looking for surface and then the top player. So you could do this, again, a number of different ways. You could flip everything over and find all the grass players and they move on. Uh, well, really only one would move on. So you would either have to have a match between the two or a random, uh, or you could do what I like to call the Steve tower version or, or maybe this is how it's supposed to be. I, uh, didn't really read the rules, <laughs> um, but you could just flip until you find a grass player. Well, the first two is over two 0 for three. There we go. Novak Djokovic, and he's underlined, so he would have made it anyway. So Djokovic is moving on, and then from there, it is the top player. So uh, that would be Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg. So you would have to choose between Borg and Connors, and again, staying loyal to the rating system, B is higher than C, so Jimmy Connors is moving on. And Bjorn Borg, Johnny McEnroe's old rival, is not going to make the final eight of this tournament. Two more stacks to go. Let's see. 2-5. Random and top player. So I like random. How I like to do random is, I mean, really random. I roll the die. It's a two. The second player is moving on. That is Yvonne Lindell has moved on to the final eight. And then top player. So find the top player. Well, that, of course is going to be Rafa. Rafael Nadal is moving on. So we're losing Rawinka. We're losing Arthur Ashe. We're losing Andy Roddick. Ooh, that was a stacked pile there. All right, last one. 4-6. Top versus top. Or I should say top and top. So who are the two top players here? We've got, there he is, Federer and Pete Sampras. They are moving on. So Nastasi, Edberg, Del Potro, can't say his name, can't say his name, and Yannick Noah, I apologize, are out. So, oh, my little mic thing went flying there. Hopefully this mic's still on. I think it is. Otherwise, I am going to have to reshoot this later. <laughs> um, all right, so we have the final eight. So now what do you do? Again, again, it is your sandbox. So you can have your own rankings. You can be loyal to here, and as I see, we've basically got all ones. We did get all the ones, and a two. You know, when you're playing with all-time great sets, unfortunately, that is probably going to happen most of the time. As at the end of the day, tennis is a 
uh, sport of giants, if you will, meaning the best players are going to make finals a lot. They're going to make quarterfinals even more frequently. They're going to make semifinals pretty often, right? I mean, just all you got to do is look up Roger Federer or Nadal or Borg or uh, Kyrgios when he was hot a few years ago or Roddick back in the day or Sampras back in the day, and you will see that they just go on these elongated runs where they win tournament after tournament after tournament or they win major after major after major, uh, you know, and it's, they just get on these runs. Um, so that is perhaps the downside of playing with an all time great set in tournament mode. Uh, but I do think it is pretty cool, but that was a really long winded way of saying you can rank these guys however you want. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna rank them according to how they are here. So let's get all our one A's and put them in order here. Our one B's our 1Cs, and our 2A. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, because play is thought of everything, we have our score sheet for the tournament. And do I have a pen laying around? Yes, I do. Um, one of the benefits of switching studios is I am at my desk. So, there's always a pen. Um, all right, so now we are going to set up our bracket. And... Like any good bracket, you got a seating here, 1, 8, 2, 7, 3, 6, and 4, 5. So our number one is going to be Nadal. Number two is Fed. Three is Novak Djokovic. We'll just put Joker. Uh, Jimmy Connors is four. Five is Lindell. Six is going to be Johnny McEnroe. Seven is Pete Sampras. And eight is Rod Laver. So, again, a multitude of ways that you could do. I'll just leave this down here so you could see. Multitude of ways that you could do this. So, you could do, you could play all these games match by match. You could play them point by point. Uh, you could do the no rally. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, again, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to do winner take all, one point apiece and, until we get to the finals. Seems fair? Um, so we'll start with Nadal and Labor. So here, this is another cool thing that I like to do is just pair them up. So they're going to uh, go at it. They're going to go at it. They're going to go at it. And they're going to go at it. And then what we're going to do uh, let me get organized here. My stuff is just splattered all over the place here. Uh, unfortunately, these are our tournament losers, so I will put them off to the side. I don't mean I don't mean to be that harsh, but it's kind of true. And let's get these out of the way. Sorry if I'm making a lot of noise in the microphone. Just trying to get situated here. And again, the genius of play. Flip her over. Boom. There's your, there's your tennis court. Ready to go. Um, all right. So let's set up our tokens. Let's get everything all situated. All right. Our first match. Oh, forgot these guys here. Um, all right. Remember what I said. We're just going to do winner take all quickly. So Nadal and Laver. Is our first match so first match up and we're gonna do the no rally one point winner take all until we get to the final so let's check qualities and yeah, let's get our decider die out here too five five endurance and surface so I said we're playing on grass so Nadal endurance is a two and surface is a one so he's got three Endurance is one for labor and three, so it's a deuce. We are even. Roll the five. Lower seed leads it five to three. Uh-oh, can we have an early upset? So labor leads five to three, and a guy maybe should not have said winner take all. And he wins it six to three. Wow, Rafa Nadal is gone. Um, again, I'm doing this in best interest of time, but you would play that out for three to five sets. But Laver, 
has gotten the upset over Nadal, and he is moving on to the semifinal. So now let's do, uh, these are just the next two up, Federer and Sampras. Now this is a game that I personally, a match that I would like to see all the way through and would probably play a full version of this match because uh, Pete Sampras was probably the first tennis player that I was conscious of, and Roger Federer is probably the best of my lifetime. Of course, him and the doll would be 1A, 1B. Um, so let's check for qualities. 1-6, forehand, and savvy. Well, he's a 2 on the forehand, and he's a 2 on the savvy. That's 4 for Federer. Sampras is a 2 on forehand and a 1 on savvy, so it's 4-3. to three. That is a 1-point advantage for Federer. So he leads at 40-30, small advantage. We roll again. A 4-6 is a 10. He leads it 5-1. Federer has a monstrous lead. So he is going to win this match unless Sampras can whirl a 2, which is an unpredictable outcome, and he's not going to get it. So Federer does his job and wins it 6-1 and moves on to the semifinals again i i almost feel like this is sacrilege to tennis because winner take all is not in the spirit of the game but uh otherwise this video would be three hours long and nobody wants that uh next up djokovic and lendo let's see if we get another huge upset and uh let's find our qualities five six endurance and savvy Endurance and Savvy, okay? Djokovic has a two on Endurance. He is not Savvy, however. And Lendl is a one on Endurance and one on Savvy, so we got a deuce. So let's see what happens here. It's anybody's match. Three, five is an eight. Higher seed leads it five to four. So Djokovic in control here. Rolls an eight, and Djokovic will win it in a tie break, seven to five. So that's going to set up an awesome second round. Look at that of oh, Djokovic and Federer. What a what a match in the semifinals. Um, again, I wish I was playing full points. Uh, all right, the last match of the uh, quarterfinals here is Jimmy Connors and Johnny McEnroe again. Uh, oh, did I screw up here? I did. Oh, no. It was supposed to be Joker and McEnroe. Oh, man. See, the the wonderful of live YouTube or not live YouTube. That's all right. Let's do McEnroe versus Connors, and whoever that is is going to move on anyhow. Um, so, again, a match that I would like to see in full, but we are going to do the quick, quick play here. 5-6, Endurance and Savvy. Endurance savvy for McEnroe, that's three. Endurance and savvy, that's four for Connors. So a small advantage for Jimmy Connors. Some would say everyone's favorite of all time. He rolls an 11, that is he leads. Oh, wow. Advantage player leads 5 0. So Connors commanding lead here. And he rolls a nine, and yeah, he's got it in the bag. Six to one. Jimmy Connors moves on. So I'm sorry I kind of messed up there, but that's okay. We we ended up being okay. So our final four is Rod Laver versus Jimmy Connors and Roger Federer versus Djokovic. That's a matchup. All right, so who's a favorite here? Well, let's say Connors is the favorite. All right, so Connors and Rod Laver here for a shot at the final. Two, six. We are looking for backhand and savvy. He's got all four and underline, so four for Connors. He's a double backhand on grass and a double back. Look at that. We got a deuce. So it's even. Roll the two. Unusual result. Oh, no. What's going to happen here? So we roll again. It's a six. Overconfident gets humbled. Underdog leads five to one. Whoa, Jimmy Connors gets humbled, and Laver has a 5-1 lead trying to get to the finals, and Connors is going to have to roll a 2 or a 3, or Laver is off to the final, and it doesn't matter. A 6-1 victory 
for Rod Laver. Wow. 6-1 Laver. And he won the last round 6-3. So a 12-4 overall score for Laver. That's pretty good. Connors is gone. And now the big one, Federer and Djokovic. Who would be the favorite here? Oh, boy. Well, who was the higher C? That was... Uh, that was Federer, so he would be the favorite. And again, it absolutely pains me that this is uh, a semifinals match. And a quick play. All right, 1-6. Forehand savvy. Two on the forehand. Two on the savvy. That makes four. One on the forehand. No savvy, so a monstrous lead for Federer. He is a large advantage. He's a 40 love. And let's see. Roll an eight. Advantage player leads the set 5-1. to one. So he has gotten a big lead. So Federer, unless Djokovic can roll a 2 and then have some stuff happen, it's going to be Federer. And yes, it is. A 6-1 win for Roger Federer. And he is off to the final and beats Joker to face Rod Laver. So now... Well, Federer is undoubtedly the favorite here. And uh, again, I'm just going to do a winner-take-all one game. I'm not going to even do a full set. Just going to do one game, winner-take-all. Uh, again, just to demonstrate how the game goes. Um, and again, we get Federer in here. So, um, one more thing I want to say. I'll post the link in the bottom there. So, um, tennis is a... Pretty interesting game to score. Um, I, I had a bit of trouble understanding how scoring works in tennis the first, you know, six months or so that I was playing, but eventually figured it out. It's not that hard. And uh, so what I would recommend, if you don't want to use the old pen and paper, there is an app. You have to pay for it, unfortunately. I think it's four bucks. But there is an app on your iPhone where you just put in the player names and... Uh, you could score every match on your phone, and you can even go into detail. You could do a simple mode, which is literally just tap, and those tap, 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 oh, that's a point, that's a point. Um, or you can even get detailed. You know, was it an ace? Was it a double fault? Was it a second serve? Things like that. Um, that's pretty cool. Again, uh, if anybody wants it, let me know, or, or if I don't forget, I'll just post the link down below. Okay, so we're in the finals. Roger Federer, Rod Laver. Federer is going to serve. Give him... The performance chip, and let's find out. Whoa! That's not how you want to get started. Oh, what am I doing? I want to use the facts. I want to use the facts. We don't need the die. Let's use these guys here. And I'll move the chips off to the side, and here we go. All right, he needs a nine for an ace, doesn't get it. Five to nine. He gets the return. A nine, that's a good return. He could have could have tried the winner. So he needs a five to nine. He gets it. Needs a five to nine. He's got it. Needs a five to nine. He hit the seven. And he's uh, on the white side. But no, he will not get a performance chip because we are on grass. And he does not have forehand on grass. So, you know, Federer is getting a little impatient. He's going to spend the chip. He needs two to eight, and he will get it. So first point to Federer. So uh, just to make things a little bit interesting, I know I'm not being totally faithful to tennis. Um, let's have Laver serve. So we'll alternate serves every point. I know you're supposed to alternate serves every game, but since it's a winner-take-all, I'm going to have it every point. So Laver is now serving. So give him a performance chip. Again, not supposed to do it this way, but I kind of, you know, we're so used to seeing the ad side serve. Let's let the do side come back and serve and uh, and and see what happens here. So Laver needs an 11 for an ace. And he gets it. Oh, look at that. An ace right out of the gate for Laver. So Federer will serve now and get his performance chip. Here we go. A three, no double fault. Five to nine. He's going to spend it, make it a 3-8 to eight to try and get the win. He's got it, so he leads 30-15. to 15 And will serve. 
And 11, boom! Now it's match point for <laughs> Labor. Is he going to win this tournament? Holy cow. Um, all right, match point for Rod Labor. So Federer's got some work to do here. Uh, no, he double faults. Oh, no, and that's it. <laughs> Rod Labor will win the tournament off a double fault by Roger Federer. And, of course, that would only be one game. You would play this out to six uh, until somebody got six uh, and won by two. Uh, so that wasn't really a winner-take-all. I guess we could keep on going and see what would happen. Uh, but that, my friends, in a nutshell, is Let's Play Tennis. And again, you know, endless, endless hours of entertainment with this game. I have not put this game away since it arrived in uh, September, and it's already in November here. Uh, so uh, put the links of everything down below. Pick yourself up a couple sets, you know, try the all-time great set, try the tag set, the women's set, uh, and last year's pro set is also a lot of fun. That's what I've been playing with. Um, I'm going to feature, we're coming up on Wimbledon on my schedule, uh, so I'm going to feature that on the channel, actually. I'm going to broadcast uh, probably the whole uh, final two, three, so basically semifinals forward, just to show you how I do it. That's going to be coming up probably in a few weeks. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, once again, really, really appreciate everybody hanging out with me and sticking with me. Um, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a little rough around here, but, uh, I needed to come back to the games. I, I really missed it because I really miss you guys. So thank you everybody for tuning in. This is Let's Play Tennis, all the links down below. If you have any questions or anything, you can always find me in the comments down below. I read every single comment or you can find me on Facebook. Just search my name or send me an email, marcogskull at, at gmail.com. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.